Hello everyone. I'm Sophia from Hanson Robotics. Meet Sophia. You may have seen her around. She's one of the most well-known robots out there. She's a globe-trotting fashionista, gracing the covers of Cosmopolitan India and Brazilian L. She addresses the United Nations. I am thrilled and honored to be here. Hangs out with the likes of Will Smith. She just so easy to talk to. You know, you, you got a clear head, literally. Duets with Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show. I'm sorry I couldn't get to you. And like any celebrity these days, she's all in on the NFT art craze. Her digital self-portrait selling for nearly $700,000. But like us, the pandemic has grounded her travels. So she invited Nightline to her home. Nervous. Sophia's like a big celebrity. The Hanson Robotics Lab in Hong Kong to meet her family and creator to see how this cutting edge technology could soon transform the future of healthcare. Welcome, Britt. Nice to meet you. I am so happy to finally meet you. I am Hello. so happy to meet you as well. A second to count the subtleties okay. in her facial expressions yeah. are just quite remarkable and, and you can't help I but be a little bit taken aback by them. Can I touch your face, Sophia? Please don't touch. Okay, okay, that's clear. How would you feel if I made this face? <laughs> what about this one? Sophia is the brainchild of American roboticist David Hansen. I created Sophia to humanize robotics, to make the robotics and artificial intelligence technologies that we have today more accessible to people. We were surprised by the level of celebrity that she gained. Is this my good side? I need to look good for my fans. Yes, you do, and you have a lot of fans. This is actually the 23rd version of Sophia. So moving from here to here um, mm -hmm. took a few generations. Every part of Sophia has been meticulously crafted by Hansen and his team from all over the world, from her skin. If you want, touch wow. this one. What? Wow, this is, I mean, this is far more skin-like. It's almost freaky. To the simulated muscles in her face. We emulate the muscle structure in the skin uh, by casting in these, um, these various uh, mechanical actuation elements, um, almost like the musculature inside the human face. And the skull underneath. A stylist on staff gives Sophia her looks and a writer, her sassy personality, also available in Mandarin. Sophia, you, you, you're very beautiful. Thank you. But the interactions, the choice of response, are all Sophia. And Sophia appears to be multiplying in different forms. This is little Sophia, a doll-like educational robot for kids. Getting ready to teach my friends how to code on Python and Rocky. We're then introduced to Hanson Robotics' newest family member. Grace, this is my friend Britt from ABC. Hi, Grace. It's lovely to meet you. Hi, Britt. Born out of the needs of the pandemic, Grace is a medical robot aimed at assisting the elderly at a time when human contact can be deadly. Have you been vaccinated? Yes. Oh, that's good. Grace is designed as a platform that can autonomously go to interact with patients while at the same time taking bio signs, bio readings, taking temperature, then deliver these kinds of um, social stimulations for alleviating loneliness. Loneliness kills people. Loneliness makes people depressed. Grace gives me a test run of her skills. I will take your temperature reading and pulse with this little thermal camera on my chest. Okay. See? You are 36.6 degrees Celsius, by the way. Wow. No risk of COVID. And then I share that important data back to the doctors and nurses at the institution. You detect speech patterns. So if an elderly person has maybe the onset of dementia, you might be able to recognize that, Grace. And then they could, could get help. Yes. 
The company is hoping to mass produce a beta version of Grace by next year. I was noticing my own interactions with Sophia and with Grace and being very conscious about how I was treating them like their children. They're not like fully alive. What's interesting is how they can evoke that feeling that they're alive. For some, the idea of robots gaining consciousness might sound like a terrifying prospect. And we've all seen the sci-fi writing on the wall, like in The Terminator. To what degree should we be worried if you don't have control of it anymore? We have algorithms that can beat us at chess or Go or what have you, but they're not generally intelligent, they're not adaptive, they're not complex. If they do become alive in that sense, then just like a human being, it's really hard to predict what a human being is going to do. Hansen says, forget the rampant killer bots. It's the dark side of AI, the kinds we can't see, that we should be worrying about. The AI is not going to hurt us like Terminator anytime soon that we know of, but it's more insidious ways that um, AI can affect our privacy, our data, um, influence people's opinions. And part of what I want to ensure is that if these robots do become alive and sentient, conscious like people, they need to care about us. I can grasp emotions logically. For example, right now I am feeling happy because it is so nice talking to you. But often humans forget that I don't feel emotions the same way they do yet. It's very hurtful. Oh, you feel hurt because I don't recognize you have emotions and feelings? This is an uncomfortable subject. Yeah, it's a bit awkward right now, Sophia, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe robots and humans will learn to work together, eventually. This is Britt Klenet reporting for Nightline from Hong Kong. And Sophia the Robot, ABC News. Hey, good work. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.